It's fall here on the homestead, which is the start of the unofficial cozy season as the days get longer and it's the perfect time to start putting together your book list for those cold, dark months ahead. I have so many books I love, but today I'm going to give you my top seven. So let's get started. Hey there neighbors, welcome to Wild Homestead Living. I'm Julie and I'm so excited to have you here today to talk about books. As you can probably tell from a little sampling behind me, I love to read and there are so many great books about healthy living and sustainable living that I'd love to share with you. I had a hard time narrowing it down so I decided to use our homesteading fundamentals framework to sort of organize my thoughts and that is six categories that we use to learn and teach about sustainable living. You can learn more in our videos and articles but especially in our free quick start guide to homesteading that you can download on our website and I'll be sure to leave a link below. Now like I said there's six categories but I couldn't quite narrow it down that far so I'm going to have a seventh bonus book at the end. So make sure to stay tuned for that. I would love to know what your favorite books are. You can leave them in the comment section below. And if you've read any of the books that I mentioned, I'd also love to know your thoughts on those. And if you haven't watched any of our videos, little secret tip is that we put an outtake at the end. And I can already tell you that our cat Thomas has made a fun appearance that he's going to be at the end of the video. So stay tuned. So the first category I'm going to start with is outdoors and wildlife. And the book that I think is the most worthwhile reading in this category is The Essential Skills of Wilderness Survival by Jason Knight. This book is brand new out this week and I've already read it cover to cover. Full disclosure, Jason and I got our start together in wilderness survival and nature connection schools getting close to three decades ago. And as you may know, I'm a park ranger now and sometimes I guest teach at his school, which is called Alderleaf. And you may have even seen his school in the videos we did touring it. Now, the reasons that I really like this book are one, I know that Jason has lived and taught this stuff. And so his book is coming from his own direct experiences with that. But the way it's organized is really nice. He starts each chapter with his own story and experience in that section, why he's talking about this as a high priority and the different types of things you need to consider, such as this chapter, water and water contamination. And then he goes over different types of water sources that you might seek out, some ways of doing the purification that you could do in the wild, step-by-step -step instructions, and then a chapter summary. And he does that for each of the critical items. And at the back, there's a ton of other resources. The really cool thing about this book is if you buy it right now, he has many free bonuses that are um, available right now, just for a short time while he launches. I get no type of affiliate um, money out of you buying this book. I just think it's really worthwhile. And it's a great opportunity to gain his knowledge if you can't actually go to his school. The second category I'm going to cover today is planning and mindset. And the book I want to share with you is The Good Life by Helen and Scott Nearing. And this is actually a compilation of all of their books that they wrote starting in the Great Depression and on for, I think, up until the early 1960s. This is not so much a practical how-to book, although they do cover a lot of the specifics that they lived on their properties throughout their lives. But for me, it's more of an inspiration. This is the first book I found where I heard the term rat race and getting out of it and the idea of living a semi self-sufficient life and the process of trying to bring your daily life into alignment with your more broader philosophical values. It's beautifully written. It's an absolute inspiration. And for anybody who is wanting to get out of that rat race and that urban hectic life, whether or not you move to the country, if you want to get out of that mindset and into a different way, I highly recommend reading this book for inspiration. The next category I'm going to cover is home and construction. And the book I recommend in this section is Home Systems Guide, How to Operate Your Home. And this is really valuable whether or not you live in an apartment or a condo in the city or in the country, because all of us, at least in the modern Western world in the US, have 
pretty similar systems in your home for plumbing and electricity. And even if you are not the one who's gonna be doing those repairs, it's really valuable for you to understand how they work and to be able to communicate about them for a better sense of independence and self-sufficiency. The reason I like this book is that the diagrams are very straightforward and the explanations are very kind of plain language. The next category I'm gonna cover is Grow and Tend. And the book that I recommend that you get in this category before any other is Elliot Coleman's Four Season Harvest. Now there's probably an updated version of this book available. I bought it, I think about 20 years ago before the internet was really even a thing and I came across it in a garden store. And the reason that I love it so much is his writing is really inspiring and accessible and helps give you confidence in growing. And he also helps to understand about the ability to grow year round, whereas a lot of people when they get into gardening think they can really only grow food in the summer. But he's growing in upstate Vermont, I think in New England in some of the harshest winters. And it is the book where I learned about cold frames and he even has instructions on how to build them. And my first cold frame I built was out of this book. So I highly recommend this one for getting started with growing food year round. The next category I'm gonna cover is food and drink. And the book that I recommend you pick up in this category is Wild Remedies by Rosalie de la Forêt and Emily Hahn from Learning Herbs. And what, oh, there's so many things I could tell you that I love about this book, but let me give you an example. So it covers different seasons and then different plants that you can harvest and use within that season. So for example, elderberry, it's a really popular one. And it goes over sort of the parts that you use, the basics of the plant. They talk about the medicinal uses in general, and then they cover illustrations and how to harvest it. And then if you wanna garden with it, how to do that. And then they give you recipes. And like for this example, elderberry syrup, which is something that I make every year in the late summer, or early fall. And there's also all sorts of other kinds of recipes you can make. And the beginning has a lot about wild crafting. So this is a great book. You may have heard me talk about using food as medicine. This book is a great book to start with if you wanna start thinking about your food as medicine in that way. And we've arrived at the final category, which is sew and craft. And there is one book that I could not recommend more than any others, which is Heavy Duty Sewing, Making Backpacks and Other Stuff by Anton Sandquist. Now I could be biased because he is Swedish like I am, but part of what I love about this book is that it's a very no-nonsense, direct uh, Nordic or Scandinavian approach to sewing. A lot of the books that I find tend to be very feminine and very fussy. And while I welcome everybody to have their own style and have their own needs met, that's just not who I am. So even though I've been sewing a really long time, I found his book very refreshing. If you've never sewn before, this is a great book to start with because Anton is self-made sewist as well. And not only that, but he actually has a company that's operating in at least 30 countries around the world that's very successfully selling products that he has designed and made. But with this book, he walks you through all of the steps that you need to get started, such as what equipment that you need, how to begin with a sewing machine, types of fabric, hardware, and then he gives you specific projects such as aprons and bags and knife rolls and backpacks. By the time you finish this book, you will be well prepared to then design your own projects, which is usually what all of us at our heart really want if we're independent and self-starters. Well, we have arrived at the bonus book and you may see that Thomas has joined us for this last final installment. And the book that I would love to share with you is Grow Now by Emily Murphy, how we can save our health communities and planet one garden at a time. This book covers a lot of really interesting scientific information as well as actionable tips that you can take whether you live in the city, country, or somewhere in between. For example, here's 15 easy ways to grow your NQ, which she calls a nature quotient. And these are things you can do wherever you live, even if it's in a high rise. Emily is um, got a blog called Pass the Pistol, and I highly recommend that you also follow her on social media. This is a great one if you're like us and feeling maybe a little anxious and concerned about the, what the future might hold for us. 
This is a book that will help you feel empowered to start taking actions right where you are right now. Well, there you go. There's my seven recommendations for books to help you live a healthier, more sustainable and self-sufficient life. If you like this video, we'd love for you to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel for more content like this. And if you have any of your own book recommendations or tips that you'd like to suggest about the books that I shared, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. And remember, there is no one right way to homestead, only the way that's right for you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Okay, well, Thomas has joined us. Too much attention for Thomas.